Story time. Went on a group RV camping trip in the middle of nowhere Arizona only to awake and hear something sniffing the outside of our tent. My immediate reaction was that it was likely a bear or some animal that came across our site, and just maybe my dumbass friends didn't tie up the garbage? Seconds later, I can hear the sniffing go to the tent next to ours and everyone in mine grabs one another quietly to acknowledge we all were awake and were aware of what's happening outside. Moments later, a friend in another tent popped out and started to scream and make noise, he had a gun too hoping it would scare off whatever animal was in our sight. Turns out, it wasn't an animal. It was some guy who had gone through our coolers or food and also decided it'd be okay to sniff our tents. Our friend chased him off and we immediately packed our shit and left. Edit, alright, since this is floating at the top I thought I'd a second creepy, camping story. A year after the above incident, my dumbass friends and I went back to the nearby area thinking what we encountered was a one-time incident. This time, we thought we'd outsmart any possible creepers and instead of camping in our tents, we all slept in the beds of our trucks and SU versus cause you know, they can't possible sniff a Toyota Tacoma? Anyways, it's the middle of the night, I'm passed out in the back of my SUV when I suddenly feel a bright light on my face. Naturally, I would have woken up, cussed and asked who was doing that. However, I instantly knew to pretend to be asleep and not let the individual know I was awake. I laid there next to my girlfriend, hoping she would do the same as one and one kept an ear out for any unusual sounds, like sniffing. All I could hear was a friend snoring by the campfire. After the light left my car, I heard the person walk to the next truck and shine his light on my friends in there. I slowly looked up and it ended up being some older guy just standing there staring at everyone while they slept. I waited until he left the campsite and I busted my ass out of that truck and woke up my friends, most of which had also been pretending to sleep and realized what was going on. My family went RV camping every summer when I was growing up. We usually bounced between Virginia Beach, Assateague, and this god-awful place called Westmoreland. One trip we were in Assateague, near the beach, and we had two tents set up in different parts of the site. Sometime in the middle of the night my mom woke up, which woke me. She was sitting up straight but completely still, and I looked over at what she was staring at. In the moonlight there was the silhouette of what looked like an old woman looking into our tent. Long wiry hair and everything. I was young, so it terrified me, and I started asking my mom what that was, who was outside. Once I made noise it spooked the old woman and she took off, and that's when we realized she was actually one of the feral ponies that live on the island. We had set up that particular tent on one of their trails, and they were going down to the beach. My family and I settled into our makeshift campsite in the heart of a seemingly tranquil forest. Our RV stood like a sturdy fortress among the towering pines, promising a night of peaceful rest beneath the stars. As darkness draped the woods an unsettling stillness settled over our RV. The whispers began, faint at first. We dismissed it as the normal sounds of the forest, the creaking of branches and rustling leaves. But the whispers didn't fade. Instead, they grew louder and more scary, weaving through the air like unseen specters. An uneasy tension hung in the night, shrouding our once cozy campfire with an air of foreboding. Suddenly, a forceful impact jolted us. The RV quivered under an unseen assault, as though a colossal creature sought to claim it as its own. Panic seized our hearts, and I instinctively ushered my family inside the relative safety of the RV. Clutching a rifle in trembling hands, I peered through the window, scanning the darkened perimeter. The whispers intensified, now a cacophony of menacing voices that seemed to goad us into fear. Then, with a guttural roar, the assailant revealed itself, a massive, dark silhouette assaulting our RV with brute force. Fear gripped me as I aimed the rifle and fired a shot through the window. The creature held in pain. 
Seizing the opportunity, it retreated into the shadows of the woods, leaving a palpable sense of dread in its wake. Summoning the courage to confront the unknown, I ventured outside. There, on the forest floor, lay the creature I had shot. To my disbelief, it was not the massive bear or Bigfoot I had imagined, but a bipedal form, a creature that resembled the stuff of folklore, a werewolf. As the moon cast an ethereal glow on its matted fur, I couldn't shake the surreal realization that I stood face to face with a this wolf-like creature. Returning to the damaged RV, I assessed the toll of the night's events. The once sturdy vehicle bore the scars of the scary encounter, dented and scratched, a testament to the inexplicable terror that had unfolded. In that moment, a solemn vow escaped my lips, a promise to my terrified family and to myself. We would never venture into the RV camping again. I lived in a very small town once when I worked for my laptop. Like, population 200 small. I was in a small cabin in the woods, though next to the highway. One day I was walking my dog and heard two gunshots somewhere nearby. Didn't think much of it, it's a hunting area and it's kinda redneck-like. The next day, or the day after, a truck pulls up. I don't even know anyone in this town, so it's weird, and I'm put off. Guy calls me over, says he's my neighbor. Asks if I heard the shots. I said yeah. He claims it was his neighbor taking pot shots at his house, over a land dispute. Doesn't ask me to be a witness for him or anything, just if I heard. Okay. Seems really odd to me. Never met this guy before and when I say neighbor, I mean 500 meters, one kilometer away out of sight. Guy sees my dog digging somewhere unimportant, and all of a sudden starts trying to tell her not to do that. Gets out and she's iffy of him says here watch, calls her over, grabs her and tries to do the stupid Cesar Chavez dominance, hold the dog on their back thing, for really no reason. She starts yelping, I'm like dude stop. He asks me whether I have any guns myself, I say no. Says he is a great dog trainer. He asks me to go over and mow his lawn, and please ensure to bring your dog. In the strangest way, just like that. Please ensure you bring, my dog's name. I can't describe it, but his mannerisms and the way he talked was just plain creepy, especially that line. He leaves soon after, and I'm thinking. F I just told this guy not only that I heard the gunshots, but that I'm unarmed here. How do I even know it was his neighbor like he claimed, and not in fact that this weird dude has shot someone at his home, and is trying to see who might have heard or witnessed. I wouldn't go to his house, not a chance. Horrible feeling. Then he kept showing up asking why. Calling and texting asking why, I gave him my number before realizing how weird he was. Really adamant I go over there. Turns out the guy is a total alky, lost his wife, lost his job, lost everything, very dangerous mental state. Nothing to lose. The small store owners in town explain the guy to me. He's apparently the most hated guy in the valley, bad reputation. I'm now really freaked out. I found it very hard to sleep after that. Cabin in the woods, nobody nearby that would hear any commotion, ample angles for the place to be approached from the woods and just a can of bear spray and a knife. And the guy knows I have no guns. I would be kept up for hours listening at night for any movement outside, as it was dead silent there. One night, middle of the night, my dog starts to growl. Then growls more. I don't hear anything, but it didn't matter. Every room in that cabin had a window but the bathroom. I just got up, grabbed the knife plus bear spray and locked myself in that bathroom for hours listening. I think I eventually fell asleep in there. I don't think I've ever felt that kind of dread. I just pictured this lunatic sneaking up with a shotgun to take me out, for maybe having heard him murder someone with a gun days earlier. F. It was just awful. I moved, but unfortunately the new landlords were equally creepy, and even started trying to steal my dog, even though they had three, literally, I heard them discussing it, 
how they had to make themselves the in crowd so that she'd want to be with them, and hand feeding her dog food when they thought I wasn't looking. Must have just been the small town thing, totally strange people in that town for the most part. They went to market one morning, I packed all my shit into my uninsured van with no license, and my pup, and bailed that town and never looked back. Good God, it was hills have eyes shit mates, I'm telling ya. I was out walking around the bush hunting for upland birds. I walked through a bit of a valley too as a short cut to get to another area. When I came across a guy standing on the trail with an AR-15 at the ready position. Instantly the hairs on the back of my neck stood up instinctively knowing this wasn't a place I wanted to be. Trying my best to stay calm. Hey, just out bird hunting, how are you doing? Fine. Long pause. I'm hunting deer. Deer season wasn't open, our 15s are not legal for deer, and he wasn't dressed for deer hunting. As a matter of fact he looked homeless, hadn't changed his clothes or bathed or shaved in several days obviously, and looked emancipated. Think of the scariest 50 year old meth addict you can think of, and put an AR-15 in his hands and you're probably close. Do you know the best way for me to go to find some birds? Well, I imagine you might find some back the way you came. His voice got noticeably sharper with the back the way you came and I obviously took the hint. I don't know if there was a meth lab, or what just down the trail, but I was certainly happy to leave. I reported the incident to the sheriff the next day but I don't know that anything ever came of it. We like to hike 3 to 5 miles down a trailhead in deep Georgia. One night the temperature dropped into the low 20s, which is really rare for mid-fall. We got a solid fire going, and the heat mixed with a full belly put us all to sleep. I woke up to my buddy tapping my foot with a stick. I looked up at him and he nodded toward the fire. There were two wild boar kicking up dirt around the dying fire. We didn't have any sort of weaponry except a hand axe that was out of our reach. My friend and I laid there completely silent watching these two for about an hour till the fire died completely down and they moved on. If you don't know, wild boars in Georgia are easily 150 pounds, pissed all the time, and prone to gore literally anything. We were really lucky we didn't spook them. I live in a rural town surrounded by mountains and forests, so camping is almost a weekly event. Even in winter. The one I can't shake is when me and a friend broke off from our group of other 16 to 19 year olds to camp by a better fishing spot about a mile away. We only brought one tent for the group, so we built a lean-to against a large boulder in a clearing. I couldn't sleep because I had the feeling something was watching us. I assumed it was a mountain lion which isn't that big of deal considering their behavior, so I threw some more logs on the fire. I looked up from the fire, and under the light of a full moon, there was a man standing at the edge of the clearing about 80 yards away. I was frozen and couldn't take my eyes off him while he assumedly stared back. He walked off in the opposite direction after about a minute or two. I doubt he had any ill intentions but I sat there holding my friends 357 the whole night. Edit, I didn't wave or call out because I was terrified. I was frozen since I was 16 and inexperienced. Nowadays, I would call out and see what's going on. Also, mountain lions aren't a concern. I've been stalked by them and have stumbled face to face with a few. They aren't a big issue or fear if you understand them. Roscoe County, Texas. The first encounter happened when I was young, trying to fall asleep. I looked out the window and saw it towards the backyard, facing my window at the time. Nowadays, I sleep in the basement. Back on topic, though, my brother and I always felt nervous looking out of that window. My bed perfectly faced the window at the time, and the beast was three feet away, looking into it. It had yellow eyes, a long snout of a dog, black fur, and its face was kind of human, 
subtract the snout, the gnarly long teeth, and fur all over its face. Once it realized I noticed it, its snarl made its way quietly through the window, and it turned into a stare down. I slowly pulled the covers over my head. I then proceeded to cry for what felt like forever. Later, I ran into my parents' room crying, telling them it was just a dream. I thought that for what was like eight years until my sophomore year in high school. My brother, my friend, and I were out fishing. My brother loved peanut butter at the time and brought a plate with a giant serving size spoon, a glob, and some Ritz crackers. There's a creek back there with surprisingly some decent fish, mostly chub, but there are bullhead carp, green-bellied sunfish, crayfish, snapping turtles, brown trout, and, I think, that's really it. We sometimes thought it would be funny to throw the chub there and leave them at our favorite spot, a giant fallen oak tree that acts like a natural bridge across the creek. It fell due to the amount of weight it was bearing. My friend and I went downstream one summer's day, meanwhile, my brother was fishing alone. He went to go take a leak and left the food on the other side of the creek. When he came back, he saw something running off, which he described as more of a Bigfoot. He ran to us, hysterical. We just thought he was crazy, so we started calling him Crazy Joey. After that, I thought of my own encounter with something strange. Later, my friend was busy with lawn work and prepping to move, so I was secretly afraid to go out. Joey decided to come back there a month later and left by himself. I wish I could have seen him to confirm my story, but the second time around, I believed him for sure. He was catching some fish, and his line was all screwed up, so he took it off his fishing rod and re-spooled it. He claimed that he had a chase off with the same thing that took the food previously. I've seen something else very similar to my own sighting. My brother, my friend, and some others were going to fish at an illegal spot, we didn't know it was illegal, and it turned out to be private property. Whenever my friends and I scout new spots, we have a tradition of casting base lures first and then using normal live bait. I wanted to hesitate because the fish were biting pretty good at the creek. So sure enough, they went ahead of me across the oak towards the quarry. I felt alone after 12 minutes, and then I took my bag, two poles, and tackle, and I changed out close to the log. I started walking and saw what I thought to be a big gray wolf. It made eye contact with me, and we had another stare down. After a little while, I chased it off into the prairie. In October of 1992 in Warren County, New York it was about 6 a.m. and I was on my way to work when something came out from the right side of the road, out of the woods, and forced me to stop or run into it. It was dark that time of morning so it took a few seconds to get my thoughts together. When I did, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was somewhere between 7 and 8 feet tall, at least with, white or light gray hair from head to toe. It was standing 10 to 12 feet in front of my car directly in the headlights, so I had a perfect view. The creature was standing facing the left side of the road with a slight twist to its body in my direction. We stared at each other for what seemed to be minutes but I can't say for sure how long it was actually. I had absolutely no fear of this creature. It seemed to have a sad demeanor. This creature made no sound at all and I do not have any reason to believe it was male or female. Needless to say, I've carried my camera ever since but I believe that this was a once-in-a-lifetime incident. I was alone in my car with no other witnesses. I started to tell my mom and sister at work when I arrived but I said it was a bear because I knew they would think I was crazy. Many months later I told my family and sure enough, they called me crazy. My siblings and I went camping once and had this experience. Incredibly powerful storm comes through and the lightning is just slamming the lake and crawling endlessly through the clouds while an endless roar goes on and on. The winds and roar got so intense that we considered abandoning the tent for the car, considering the tent was lifting off the ground. We end up running to the car and climb in, 
and proceed to watch our tent collapse and be blown into a nearby tree. The car was shaking like a mother f so we decided to get out of there and drive about 20 minutes to my grandpa's house to spend the night. The next day we went back and part of the campground was closed because a small tornado had apparently gone through the campground the night before and trees were blocking some of the roads, whether it was during or after our adventure we have no idea, but from what we could tell it was pretty close to where we were. We cleaned up our campsite and left. I have never witnessed a storm so powerful and frightening before. I also never found my sleeping bag. My parents' story, not mine. They were on a canoe trip way up in nowhere, Saskatchewan, far from any semblance of civilization. One morning, they hear a rustling outside their tent. Still half asleep, my dad sits up and tries to figure out what is going on. The noise is loud, and very close. Before he can collect himself enough to go investigate, his whole side of the tent collapses and on top of him. The weight lifted quickly. Now entirely awake, my parents scrambled to open the tent flap and figure out what was going on. About 10 feet away was a spooked black bear, staring confused and concerned at the tent. After being yelled at a bit, it ran off. We figure it had been foraging in the bushes right behind the tent and lost its balance. So my dad can truthfully say he has been sat on by a bear. In 2010, in the southern Adirondacks of New York, in the Adirondack Park, to the amazement of many, America's largest wilderness park, my wife and I saw what can only be described as a hyena chasing several deer across the road. The animal literally stopped dead in front of the car staring back at us for 10 seconds before it moved off. I have been in the woods my whole life, raised with a gun since childhood, and spent my summers on Lake Champlain. I have hunted, fished, instructed archery and rifle range, hiked, coon hunted at night, owned horses and ridden horseback through the wilderness, and presently live with all kinds of wildlife on my lakefront creekside property. Well, I thought I'd seen it all, but I have no idea what this was, other than to say it was a hyena. It was very large. 150 to 175 pounds, long bushy tail, brindle, wiry, spotted, brown, black and gray coat, with a powerful predator build, thick lower jaw, rounded, diamond-shaped, triangular head with rounded ears sitting high on the head, and what appeared to be a mane running down the back originating on the neck. Its hind legs were noticeably shorter than the front and much thicker and more powerfully muscled than the front, so that the animal sloped down in the powerful rear. I have seen countless hyena on discovery, in National Geographic and Wild Kingdom as a kid, and there is no other option than this strongly resembled a spotted hyena. I immediately went home and searched it. Amazingly, it is said the mountain hyena once roamed the Adirondacks or Appalachians. Well, I have news, at least one still does. My wife and I, with me at the time, actually called NYN Khan at Raybrook when we got home and got laughed at. We even received an errant email back ridiculing my report which was accidentally sent to me instead of an NCON co-worker. This really made me mad as I had made friends with my local NCON officer who liked to use my property to catch poachers. Although we do have an animal park at the end of the lake, when I called, they assured me they have never had any spotted hyena. It was only shortly after I saw the Monster Quest episode describing a similar animal in Maine, while the Shunka Warakin was well known to the Iroquois as the dog killer, the supposed Shunka Warakin famous mount seems far too small and pig-like to be what I saw. Its legs are far too scrawny and it seems far less canine than what we saw, also possessing a longer straight coat and thinner snout. Then a few days later, we saw it again doing the same thing. There is no doubt, this was not a coyote, a wolf hybrid or a kai dog, this was a hyena. My property has a creek, creek mouth and lakefront, with four fish spawns, plenty of deer, coyote, red and gray fox, fisher, eagles, turkeys, ducks, blue heron, 
owls, osprey, geese, ducks, turkey vultures, and even the occasional black bear and this folly yearling moose, I've seen it all, especially riding horseback. You name it, I've seen it and can identify it, but have never seen anything like this. As close as I can come is the spotted hyena. I have a very high IQ and have worked for two Emmy winners, but amazingly, this is the second cryptid animal I have seen in my life, but when you do, you just never forget it, suddenly you realize the world is far more amazing than many ever know. Just imagine what is lurking out there untouched expanses of Canada and Alaska, where few, if any, have ever ventured. By the way, in the spirit of honest disclosure, I do live in what many believe to be a UFO hotspot, and I have two UFO photos taken over my home that have gone around top ufology sites. In 2009, I was featured on the cover of world famous UFO magazine, but none of it changes what I, or many of my neighbors, have seen or experienced. It was a regular Tuesday afternoon, around 3.55 p.m., and my friend and I were out enjoying a walk near the outskirts of town. The sun was still hanging in the sky, casting a warm, golden hue over the surroundings. As we strolled through an open field, our conversation was interrupted by an unusual sight that drew our attention upward. Against the clear blue sky, we spotted a large, dark figure soaring through the air. It immediately struck us as different from the typical local birds we were accustomed to seeing. The creature appeared jet black, and its size, much larger than any known bird, caught us off guard. Estimating it to be around 7 to 10 feet tall, we couldn't help but be intrigued by its unfamiliar silhouette. Realizing this was an unusual sighting, we quickly grabbed our camera, hoping to capture the moment. The creature, still soaring gracefully, allowed us to photograph it as it moved away. The resulting image showed its dark appearance and considerable size, providing a tangible record of the encounter. As we watched, the creature's flight pattern seemed unconventional, lacking the typical movements of local bird species. It wasn't a crane or owl, and its flight seemed almost mechanical, devoid of the usual fluidity associated with avian creatures. In the aftermath, we couldn't help but share our experience with friends and locals. However, the response was met with skepticism. Some suggested it might have been a trick of the light or an unusual angle, while others leaned towards a misidentification of a known bird. Despite the skepticism, my friend and I couldn't shake the feeling that what we witnessed was real. The photograph served as a personal memento, a reminder of an unexpected encounter with a mysterious creature that briefly graced our ordinary Tuesday afternoon, leaving us with lingering questions and a sense of wonder. Back in the late 1970s my parents purchased an old farmhouse that was built in 1880 in a town called South Courtright, New York. The house sat on seven acres of a beautiful valley in the middle of the Catskill Mountains. The farmhouse was in disrepair when they purchased it but over the years they fixed it up to a very comfortable weekend and summer retreat from the urban gruel of the New York City area where we lived. The trip took three hours and my sister and I didn't mind it at all. One night after we arrived my sister and I were at the kitchen table eating sandwiches for dinner while my parents had cocktails in the front living room. The kitchen was at the rear of the house and the window faced a drop-off in the property which ran down to a clear running stream. As I was eating my dinner, I was gazing out the window. It was a dark overcast and moonless October night. As I turned my head from facing my sister I looked out the window which was illuminated by the light spilling out from the kitchen, there was a huge ape-like face staring back at me. It had a broad wide face with no discernible neck and shoulders that spread out beyond the four foot wide window. The brow of the creature was heavy and I do not recall any expression on the creature's face. It was clearly, and most obviously, a Bigfoot. But what was different from any description that I had heard before about a Bigfoot, was that the hair of this creature was more orange like not brown or black. At this point, 
I yelled and motioned to the window and my sister turned and saw the creature as well. We both yelled for my parents. But when they got there the creature was gone. My father and I took flashlights and went outside to look for it but the ground was too hard due to a cold autumn that year. What we did realize however was that the creature would have to be over 9 feet tall for its face to be visible through the window at the kitchen since the basement level was exposed at that part of the house as the farmhouse was built into a hill. My parents really never believed my sister and me especially since the color of the beast was orange. But about two weeks later we read in a local paper in which a farmer had said he spotted a big hairy creature breaking into his hen house and stealing chickens. The color of the creature's hair was orange. This not a flying craft report. This is a report of something that happened to me and a co-worker on a warm summer night that changed the way I see things. We worked the late shift at the restaurant. It was June 1, 1997. We got off in the early morning hours and we talked in the parking lot and threw around a football I had in the car for a while. We left, I was taking him to his house in Madison, and we were driving down US 119 near South Charleston, West Virginia. There was never any traffic on the road that late at night and we normally stopped at a gas station. When we went by the 24-hour gas station it was closed. We wondered why and made mention of the clerk was probably taking a nap. As we drove on we began talking about something and then I said that car is on the wrong side of the road. Its light were off and it was parked. It should not have been facing towards us on the four-lane road. Then he said my dad used to work there, referring to a coal mine. And then I sort of blacked out and when he said something to me it was like I was in a dream. When I came to, I realized the car was going about 10 miles per hour on a 55 miles per hour road. My foot was off the gas. I asked him what happened and he said he couldn't remember what he was saying. I pointed out the speed we were traveling and the parked car. He said that was weird and he felt funny. We talked the whole way home about something else. That is when at his house I noticed the sun coming up. I said it's not time for sunrise. He agreed and we assumed the time had changed. His wife said it changed in the spring and that we were crazy. I was still a young adult living at home. So I called home to tell my mom that I was going to be late. Somehow that night we lost 45 minutes to an hour. He refused to talk about it at work the next day. He tried to turn it into a joke. Years passed and I saw him again and asked him about it. He said I don't know what happened to us out there but something did. That is the truth, we were afraid to talk about it. As time went on I can no longer remember the date or the exact time of departing work or arriving at his house. One thing I can assure you is that it did happen and somewhere out there is the lost hour of my life. I don't know what happened to that time we lost and one thing is for sure I don't ever wish to feel that way again. One year for my birthday my boyfriend and I went camping deep in the boonies in the west desert of Utah. A little place called Conger Springs about 15 mile down a dirt road after your drive about 60 miles down Highway 50 also known as the loneliest highway in America. It's close to the Nevada border and there is not a speck of civilization for over 100 miles between Delta, Utah and I think it's Elko, Nevada. Way off the beaten path. I chose this site because you can dig fossil crinoids and horn coral and it's public BLM land. There are 100 plus year old dilapidated shacks and other signs of brave people who long ago tried to homestead in this desolate area. So we hardly see any cars after we head down Highway 50. Don't see anyone else as he take the dirt road to the spring. As we set up camp near the dilapidated cabins it is getting dark. Suddenly a big ass white truck with several men in it ranging in age pull into the camp area and make a slow turn around, like they were checking us out, and keep driving down the dirt road without saying anything. Usually it's polite to say howdy when you encounter other people in the boonies. They didn't seem obviously dangerous or malicious but it absolutely creeped me out and I was unsettled. 
We kept our heads on a swivel that night and I didn't sleep well at all picturing all the awful things that can happen when you encounter crazy people so far from any kind of help. Kept our handguns under our pillows just in case. We don't go into the desert without protection. You never know if you will encounter snakes or crazy people and usually we do target practice when we are really far from civilization like that. Didn't see the people again till the next day. I'm elbow deep in dirt in a dry wash looking for fossils. My boyfriend was 150 feet away at camp reading a book. Suddenly an old guy I recognized from the white pickup truck comes riding down the wash on a horse. He rode up almost silently because it was soft sand. Didn't hear him till he was like 15 feet away. He definitely snuck up on me and I was basically alone out of eyeshot for my partner. Luckily I had my handgun holstered on my hip which I'm sure he quickly noticed. He said a quick howdy and kept going on his horse. A few minutes later my boyfriend came to check on me because the cowboy also startled him when he rode up quietly along with some other men on horses I didn't see. We left a few hours later thankfully and didn't see them again. It was only a quick one night camping adventure. We didn't leave because of them but if we had planned another night there I honestly would have reconsidered staying because I didn't feel very safe. It was very unsettling. Glad we didn't see any more of those cowboys. This happened on February 22, 2018. We were pretty freaked out about it and still are after these many years. I'm a truck driver. We were on our T-65 South, going through Indianapolis, Indiana on my way to Cincinnati. I just passed the off for 70 East and I'm our T-65 South. The traffic was really heavy and there was some kind of accident. I'm at the 111 yard sticker and I'm with my wife. She's in the jump seat. I see signs for our T-65 South and the next thing I know, I see a sign for our T-465 West. I asked her, WTF just happened? I'm freaked out. I went to our T-31 North. There's a highway there. I found a Walmart. Went behind the Walmart and we went to sleep. Now I am connected to Google and it traces everywhere I go. So when I woke up, I checked my Google Maps and the line went from the 111 yard sticker on our T-65 South, directly over to our T-465 going through buildings, going through parks, going through streets. There's no way my truck could have ever driven that route. But that line was going from our T-111 all the way to our T-465. If you look at the map, there's no way I could have ever taken that route. There's no way. I have absolutely no idea what happened. All I know is, I was looking at the sign and it said RT-65 South, and a split second later I'm looking at a sign that says RT-465 West. Me a female fly fisher woman alone on an isolated NorCal river when my male companions were out of sight, back cast and snagged a scary guy that I didn't know was behind me right between the eyes. If anything said former felon now homeless and in the woods, it was him. Huge guy tatted up and down, unkempt straggly red hair, greasy cut off jean jacket and pants, filthy hands and face. I apologized and said I'll get the fly out without pain because I know how to do it. I did and his face twisted with rage. I thought I'd be decked at the least or maybe attacked. In a minute one of my male friends appeared. He saw what was happening and said. You should never sit behind someone who's fly fishing. The guy didn't move. He growled. We scampered downriver as fast as we could. I used to fish in the Golden Meadow Canals near Raceland, Louisiana. This is endless swamp teeming with life of all sorts. Gators, snakes, birds, and people. We ran a small motor, a 25 hours P. Johnson. But we could do a fair clip. Far faster than a canoe or a skiff. One day, we see up ahead of us a little man in a pirogue standing and pulling in a cast net. Next to him is tree-high very thick swamp grass. 
We never came off plane and when we arrived to where he was. He was gone. There were no channels, no little runoff ditches. He was just. Gone. This area had people that had never seen the interstate 20 miles away. They had yellow school boats that took the kids to school. It was amazing. And surreal. Mid-2000s had lacked sleep issues for a couple years. Would go drive around and hike. Silence in nature like the woods is nice. Go drive up the back way to Big Bear and stopped at a small turnout I had seen a small trail lead into the woods since I was a child. Around 12 am 2 am. 50 steps and feel like I'm being watched. I'm a tall dude and never had any problems in the last year taking similar night hikes. Occasionally keep hearing brush snapping parallel as I am following this narrow path. 20 minutes and I wait really quietly as I want to see who or what is shadowing me. Decide to head back to my vehicle after 5 minutes. As I pass a large pine tree humanoid shadow almost looked like it had a cape and cloak swung its hand towards me. Got slashed on my arm and I took off into the night in the direction of my car along the trail. Got to it turned it on and didn't even see if anyone was coming around those blind curves in both directions. Just high tailed it back home. Had weird scar o my upper arm for a long time. Never went back that way either. We were out for a walk at dusk and some teenage girls came running towards us screaming. They said a naked man had been stalking them through the nearby woods, which happened to be on our property. We thought they were just hysterical and silly. While my husband stayed with the girls I walked a ways down the road, and saw these white shapes moving up and down in the dark shadows of the trees. Then I saw his naked pink torso. Super weird. I yelled out what the f do you think you are doing. The white shapes, which were athletic socks, pumped up and down really fast and disappeared into the deeper woods. We took the girls to our house and they called their parents and also the cops. The cops came up and interviewed the girls, visited the neighbors, and some other stuff. The parents came and got the girls. It was super weird. The next day my husband and I followed some tracks, but it was not conclusive. We figured it was the neighbor drunk off his ass being an idiot. Nothing much came of it. I always wondered about that. Small town weirdo. That's been a neighborhood story for about 25 years. I took a bunch of friends up to a spot I love up in Lookout Mountain. Lariat Loop Road has a picnic area at the top. We, five of us, were hanging out at night, just talking and walking around and I saw lights coming up the road, so I yelled to my friends hide and without any context, everyone just ran and hid as the car approached where we were at. Two friends jumped behind the same tree to hide, me a different tree, but slowly, my buddy dropped behind this boulder and my slow moving, arthritis buddy just shuffled about in the shadows since he can't duck or run. Car headlights illuminated our group as they came up and around the road, lol. Afterwards my buddies were all, why did we do that, why did we have to hide? I was like, well, I just wanted to freak out the car passing us in the night lol, thinking what were they thinking as they passed us hee hee. Two weekends ago I had visitors in my bedroom. I live on a military base in Maryland, USA. This occurred around 3 am. I had no trouble falling asleep in the first place that night, but I do remember tracking a white circular light even with my eyes closed right before I nodded off. After the experience I was awake for probably an hour before getting back to sleep again. I was sleeping when I felt someone's hand pressing on my butt left cheek specifically. I thought it was one of my kids come into the bed so I shoot it away and lifted my blanket up so whoever could crawl in with me. Then a hand pressed real firm on the same left cheek like it wanted my attention right that moment you know. I got up on one elbow, no kid in bed, doors closed. So I'm looking around like what the? Then. There. 
Right there. Right at the foot of the bed. Standing four feet tall, unmistakable silhouette, large head small body just right there. I sat straight up. When I did, the other one moved. It was right next to me, looking over me. I didn't notice it when I first turned around. But when I sat up it moved up and away from me. Like it had been hunched over me. Its face right next to mine. It had to be seven feet tall. Tall and thin but its head was proportionate to its body. It was dark so I couldn't see features. Just movement and shape. They didn't look solid. Like they had this swirling liquid smoke moving across their bodies. I think they were partially cloaking themselves. It looked like in between the liquid smoke there was nothing. Like little swirling liquid windows, that I could see the wall and carpet and dresser through. So I'm sitting straight up looking at the small one. I wasn't scared but my senses were all the way up. I think fear might have been trying to creep up and I didn't want to ruin whatever this moment was about to be. I said are you really here? In my normal daytime volume voice, and it slowly started to move backwards. I saw that and lurched towards it as fast as I could and stretched my arms out wildly grabbing to where it was. But I missed it. I watched it phase out of sight. Both of them. The whole experience lasted mere seconds. They woke me up. They wanted me to see them. To know that they were there. Honestly I feel like it was a gift. It was an absolutely remarkable experience and I hope they show themselves again. I live in a small wooded area in a small city in Kentucky. A couple weeks ago, November something th, I was taking my dog outside. My dog's legs were going out and she couldn't walk very well cause she was old, she was put down earlier this week, so she's taking a while. I stand out there with her to make sure she's okay. She liked to go in the backyard to do her business. She's doing said business, and I hear footsteps in the woods. I assume it's a deer or something and just tell my dog to hurry up. The steps sounded like they were all over the place. Close then far then close again. Once they sounded really close, I got my dog inside. Since I'm an idiot, I went back outside to check it out. Again, I hear footsteps and again, they're all over. Then it was suddenly really close and I saw a parting in the bushes and it was huge. I ran to my house as fast as I could and I think I sprained my ankle while doing so lol, and didn't look back. The next day, I'm taking my dog out again. This time, I heard a sort of whispering, from all around me in the woods. Once again, told my dog to hurry tf up and got inside. Maybe this part is unrelated, but Tuesday this week, an old man in a bright orange jacket and a cane and a hat was walking up and down my road back and forth for about 4 hours. By the way, it was like 20 degrees out that day. As soon as I pointed him out to my mom, he was gone, never saw him again. My house is cameras, so I went back through the footage to see if I could find videos of him. You know what I found? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Despite me seeing him on our cameras multiple times. Don't know what it is. I've just had a lot of strange encounters since that day I took my dog out and it's freaking me out. Edit to explain why seeing the guy was really weird, I don't really live in a neighborhood and I don't have any neighbors actually. There's my house, then road, and a lot of people have died on my road so it's not a place people walk on, there's no sidewalk or anything, just road then woods. So seeing some guy walking on it for hours was really strange and not at all something I've seen while living there. Might not be related and I might be paranoid or on edge, just a lot of strange occurrences that happened since that first one and something isn't right. Think I saw a skinwalker today. I live in Aquidneck Island. I was walking home earlier tonight from a local gas station I was walking through elementary school playground, when me and my girlfriend saw this creature in front of us. At first I thought it was one of my friends who left a couple minutes prior but once I started to get closer I noticed its body started to deform from a skinny tall into a wide short frame, it looked weird like a woman for a second. 
I got a weird sense that this thing wasn't human then it lowered its shoulder I noticed it had long ass hair that was covering its body. Didn't stick around for much more and started high tailing it out of there I don't know what I saw anything I think it would be a skinwalker but I have no clue if anyone can help me out it would be much appreciated. My dog has been barking all around the house for about an hour. Not just at one door, so it couldn't have been an animal, neighbor, or car, but at both doors. She's still barking right now as I type this. My dog can feel something's off that I can't, because I know how she is, and she's trying to protect me. We live in Georgia, and we have a small creek and medium-sized wooded area in the back. She's been staring out the front door for about 30 minutes, but it started at the back door. I went out while it was dark and used my flashlight out in the back area and I didn't see anything. I've turned the light on in the front to look and didn't see anything either. I'm hearing a little bit of thudding noise occasionally in both the back and front door areas, but it might be noise around the neighborhood. She's on very high alert and can't relax at all. I've tried laying down with her and she gets right back up to go look out the door. Any ideas on what this might be? Repost because I had to change something one. We were out with a convoy on four-wheel drives in a remote community in southwest western Australia. Where my in-laws own a farm so I'm pretty familiar with the area. It was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon and we made our way down to the edge of the dam for the town's drinking water, probably a 45 minimum 4x4. Four four. Not too common to see other people down there. We stumbled across a fairly new Toyota Prado nose end in the water. There was no reason for the car to be in the water. The water's edge was totally intact so it didn't look like the car had slipped into the water or anything like that. The driver's side door was open. Nearby was a complete campsite with shoes by the tent. Cooking utensils. Food. Everything. The fire was out and cold. We called out and looked around. We saw no sign of human life, like footprints or sign of a struggle. On our journey back home we saw no one. We went into town but no one seemed to know of any missing people. It's not a tourist town so. We have no idea what happened. Had to catch a flight going out at 7 a.m. so I left at like 3 a.m. because this small airport was an hour and a half away and up in the mountains. Bad idea because there were no street lights on the highway so it was basically pitch black. Also, there were plenty of deer living in the area as well. Basically, I was scared shitless. Ended up getting lost, naturally, because there was no GPS signal towards the airport and because of that. I accidentally took a right turn up an extremely steep one lane road up a mountain. I ended up having to go drive on a dirt road and all of a sudden heaps of jackrabbits just crossed the dirt road out of nowhere. Literal heaps of rabbits crossing from one side to the other. It was like something out of a horror movie. If anyone could offer an explanation, that would be great. Made it to the airport in one piece though. And hopefully didn't hit any rabbits. Never going to catch a flight at 3 a.m. in the mountains ever again lol. Years ago, my best friend and I were hiking up a local mountain we'd never been to before. We got a decent way up before a fog started to settle in. After a few hundred feet, it had become so thick that you could barely even see the trees on the sides of the path. We kept going anyway despite not being able to see more than five feet. In front of us. There were no sounds of other people, no wind, no birds, not even insects. We continued until we couldn't see any more. Right as we stopped, the mountain just ended, I have no idea how far a drop it might have been. Freaked out, we turned around, only to see what looked like two spheres, close enough together to be eyes. The reflection from them changed back and forth between yellow and purple. We knew that wolves could be a very real possibility, but running was out of the question, 
as we knew there could be a sheer drop at any point and had no idea what we saw in the fog. Whatever it was, it was gone almost as quickly as it had appeared. We decided to walk back down at that point, having no idea what we had seen. Probably going to be buried but what the hell. This happened back in 2010. I used to hike the Romanian mountains quite a lot, almost every month I was trekking by myself for two or three days at a time. Now you hear all kind of scary stories up the mountain, but most of them are told by the people taking care of the cabins up in the mountain, probably to scare you for their own fun. Most of the stories involve bear encounters and the usually I was walking up the mountain with my dog and a pack of wolves killed him in front of my eyes and ran away with him while tearing him to pieces. When I had my encounter it was in the middle of the winter and the entire place was white with snow that was crunching under my boots. It was pretty cold but a few thin layers of clothes and all the exercise was usually enough to keep away the 25C13F. I was walking for a while on the trail and I was probably halfway trough the climb when it happened. Now this was on the plateau, I already got out from the thick part of the forest and left behind all those crowded areas where you feel like the trees are trying to hide the sun from you. This plateau has no trees on but it's full of this thick bushes that are usually up to the waist and they're packed with lots of sparrows that chirp all the time so I decided it's time for a sandwich and some water. While eating I noticed that the sparrows from the thick bushes went suddenly quiet. Now I mean completely quiet. It was unbearable, I frozen in place and I was trying to listen for a noise. Any noise. The fact that you could not hear anything was so overwhelming that I could not believe it. At a moment I was thinking that maybe I got deaf so I moved my hand and my jacket made some noise. So it was not me, the mountain went dead quiet. I realized that something spooked the sparrows and it was close to me. I grabbed the knife I always keep on my waist and the pepper spray and got ready for a fight. I was already imagining the wolf coming towards me from the bushes. In the next moment the bush starts to shake violently for a second and I hear the sound of paws on snow. That's when Laika shows up shaking her tail with that specific look that a dog makes when he knows he did something bad. I think she realized that she scared the hell out of me. She accompanied me before on this hike but this time she was not at the bottom of the mountain, looks like she climbed up with someone else. After I checked my trousers, I washed my hands and we shared a sandwich and a frozen Snickers bar, we continued the climb to the cabin and spent the night there. She slept outside because dogs are not allowed in and in the next morning she was waiting for me outside with her tail wiggling all over the place knowing she'll get a sandwich. I know you were expecting a fight with a wolf, it's more of a creepy story with a happy ending. Not creepy, but I'm one of those type of people that laughs at people who say they've seen ghosts or UFOs. One winter night about five years ago, I saw about a half dozen lights that hovered and flew in a sort of diamond formation. The lights were an array of green, orange, blue, red, yellow, and white. They were weird as hell. They'd fly around for a minute, then sort of hover for a while. Some would disappear for a while then come back. Now, I live in the sticks about 12 miles outside of a small rural town and I know for a fact that the Air Force has a base about 45 miles from here, so I am thinking that I saw drones being tested. The airbase is a testing site for NASA and the Air Force. Someone told me I probably saw Japanese lanterns, but nope. They were not Japanese lanterns. They were not airplanes or helicopters. They were not stars or satellites or atmospheric gas farts. These things were most definitely craft of some sort just because of how they hovered and would sort of go into formation, and they were freaking bright as hell. At any rate, like I said, I think they were drones being tested. I actually tried taking pictures of them with a shitty digital camera. All I got out of the pics were teeny, tiny dots of light as my camera doesn't have a good zoom feature. Was in high school at the time and lived in a small town in northern Michigan. 
One weekend me and some friends wanted to go camping so we picked some Potunk Little State Park, which was really just a patch of woods in the middle of nowhere off the river that you had to drop $20 in a box to camp at. So night time comes and we're sitting around the fire. We got the entire campsite to ourselves and we see what looks like two or three flashlights bobbing far in the distance deep in the woods. Being the idiotic high schoolers that we were we decide to go investigate. So me and a few friends are sneaking through the woods in the pitch dark trying to get a closer look. Now I'm not exactly the most graceful person in the world and I step on a giant stick and it makes the loudest snap in the world. This caused us all to hit the ground because there was no way that whoever was out there didn't hear that. When we looked back up the lights were gone. So needless to say we're a little spooked. A few hours go by the fire is starting to go out, it's around 2 in the morning so we all decide to call it a night. We're all laying there in our tents when I hear one of my buddies scream. Come on dude get the F off my tent. So we all bust out laughing thinking it's one of the other guys. So he screams again come on Andrew, quit messing around I can see you. That's when things got weird because Andrew was in the tent with me. So Andrew says it's not him, and then we hear something on our tent and can make out the shadow of someone standing outside our tent so we call out our other friend who swears he's in his tent. This gives my buddy the idea to ask my cousin who was sharing a tent with his girlfriend to swear on something he loves that he's not the one doing it and he does which makes us all freak out and my buddy screams everybody get the F. Out of your tents. So we all grab something for a weapon and run to the van and peel out of there and head back to my house. When we went to check out the site the next day we noticed our cooler was open and the only thing missing was our giant pack of American cheese. As a kid, We'd go ride quads out in the desert. Pretty much had a spot out in the middle of nowhere on an unmarked road, where we would set up camp and ride all weekend. We never saw any other riders or people out there ever. I was riding through some low bushes, going about 70 miles per hour, then all of the sudden had to slam on the brakes because I found was looked like a grave. There was no one in it, but the hole was dug and it was a perfect rectangle. A few miles away we came across a shack that had an old beat up 70s lounge chair and a room filled with creepy old dolls dug out the trash it seemed. It wasn't exactly a livable space, but you could tell someone had been in there not too long ago. When my dog was still able to go on long hikes, I would take him with me on these paths nearish my house. I lived alone except for my dog, and never thought that walking alone would be a bad idea, I usually have revolver on me because of the hogs anyways. Two odd things happened. First weird thing, I'm walking down the same path I do weekly and notice that off in the distance there's a cage. Like the biggest possible dog cage you can buy and it's big enough for a person or two. I walked this path for five years, I had never seen it before and it was only maybe 50 yards off the path. It was way too far into the woods to be someone just dumping trash. It was weird, but I didn't think too much on it. Second happened a couple weeks later. Walking down the same path with my dog, but maybe a mile before the cage. There's a dirt road that is sometimes used by the rangers that intersects my path. Further down the road I see a red car parked on the side of the road with a man leaning up against the car. I give him the hello hand wave and keep going. I forgot about the guy until I hit the dirt road again on my walk back from the river. I don't see him, but I see a bit of the car is further off the road and almost hidden in the woods now. Bit unsettled by that. Keep walking, but with a bit of a pep in my step now and then I see a flash of white, color of his shirt, moving in the woods parallel to me. And now I'm panicking. I'm at least a mile from the nearest ranger station, and there's no guarantee that someone is even there. I basically start speed walking and half dragging my dog and, luckily remember that I had my gun. The path hit a less dense area and I realized that I had lost track of him. Being a female alone, this is not good, this is not good at all. I stop in the clearing, hold my gun in front of me, 
and say I see you. Come near me and I will shoot you. No sounds. I walked at a good speed for the next mile until hitting the start of the path, where I basically throw my dog, self and bag into the car and speed off. I called patrol when I had driven out of the lot and explained what had happened, and that a couple weeks prior there had been a human-sized cage near the path, and that I was thoroughly panicked and convinced there's a murderer out there. Ranger agreed that that was pretty sketchy and would check it out. I never followed up and never went on that path again alone. It was probably two years later when I finally did. I guess if he was a murderer we would have heard about people going missing in the swamp, but haven't seen anything on the news. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.